Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We've got, some might say, the ultimate American hero on the show today, yeah. D'Anthony. Uh, one of the greatest to ever do it, uh, Mr. Rob O'Neill. The man who killed Osama bin Laden is on the show today. Um, I like to call him the, the, the cock and balls of freedom. Um, and where he's inserted is where more freedom needs to go. If he's the cock and balls of freedom, what do you think the pube situation is? Oh, well, keep boy. in mind that he's an Irishman, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, we call that a redheaded disaster down yeah. there. Uh, the beauty about me giving an introduction like that is I get to do it right in front of his dad. Yeah. <laughs> he's here with us. <laughs> How are you? Mr. Tom O'Neill is also on the show. Good to see you. Thank you. It's good to be here. You know, last time we had Rob on the show, obviously we went into great detail over uh, you murking um, fucking Osama bin Laden. It was awesome. It was awesome. No need to deep dive into that today. But one of the questions that I was always curious about is, as a father, um, since he's here, when your son does something like that uh, on the world's biggest stage, is there any bigger feeling of pride that you could possibly have? I mean, I was thinking like, fuck, man, maybe winning the Super Bowl or the Heisman Trophy. But this is so much bigger than all of that combined. Uh, what went through your head when you got the call from him? Well, it's it's hard to quantify that. It's hard to qualify that. It's uh, Well, see, one of my afflictions, so to speak, is all through Rob's career, if anything went on, I was convinced he did it. <laughs> if, if, if there was, you know, the Merck, Alabama thing on his birthday, for God's sake, when I called him on Good Friday, April 10th, to uh, the Marcus Luttrell stuff, to everything, I just always had this underlying feeling, I know goddamn well he's in on this, you know. And so when it came time for the big one, and President Obama has given his wonderful speech in front of the uh, the correspondence dinner, mm -hmm. I thought, oh, he says, he's, I, I know he's in it. And plus, I'd already talked to him. He said goodbye to me. So, you know, the feeling, it's a tough feeling. Looking back on it now, it's pretty easy. I mean, I can i can pump my fist and hit my chest and have all that pride. But I was scared shitless most of the time. I, I'm, I'm sure, as, as any parent would be. Do you have any other siblings, Rob? I do. I have a brother who is, uh, I think, the reason I have such a good sense of humor. He's been a DJ uh, had his own morning show for about 30 years and then I have two sisters. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're in Butte, Montana. They're, uh, my, my they're, they're my lifeline. They're still, the morale is so high up here. They're just so funny. And I get, I get a lot of that from them and I'm convinced in order to be a good leader, uh, you need to don't lose your, don't lose your sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And I owe a lot of that to my siblings. Of course, but but I will say this: since your dad is on the show, Rob is obviously your favorite, right? Yeah, of course. In the will, he's <laughs> oh, going to get the most stuff. Come on. <laughs> I have to say that now because he's buying pork chop sandwiches at the end of the day. <laughs> I, know, I know damn well that uh, his favorite is uh, my sister, but we're not going to get into that because she used to be here soon. She's shorter than me. She can still kick my ass not getting into it. Yeah. <laughs> I was with um, my, my wife's parents over the weekend, and she's got two <laughs> brothers. And I, I asked the dad at dinner. I said, look, my wife had just made this meal, this amazing meal, and I go, who is your favorite out of the three? Without blinking, he goes, oh, yeah, it's, it's Jesse. It's the, it's the girl for sure. And I was like, ah, oh, there we go. Um, we, I know as parents you have favorites. I've got two kids now, and it's one of those where it's like, yeah, I'm starting to pick and choose at six and two who my favorite is. Yeah, and it rotates. You know, it, <laughs> it, 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 it depends on who pissed you off the most, yeah. most frequently. That well, was, it's true because I have, I have a couple daughters, and uh, my youngest, though, I, I have let her know one on one that you know if and when I need to hide the body I'm bringing you right you, yeah. you have this sociopathic type tendencies that sh you should it, it would be <laughs> a pretty good flex as a parent to just have rankings on the refrigerator yeah <laughs> if you had three children. kids yeah you just move them up and down yeah what do you think maybe you should start doing that I'm a big fan cuz I'll I'll often tell one or the other like whoever's the 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 worst on the day I'll be like look uh, he's my favorite for a reason. Yeah. Like you keep fucking everything up, and this one's my favorite. <clears throat> but when your son kills Osama bin Laden, that, that's kind of like a—that's the big one. You know what I'm saying? Like Peyton Manning had a third brother, and I don't even know what what he d did. You know what I'm saying? Eli won two. Peyton won two. I don't know what the third brother does. 
Um, HGH, probably. Cause probably. That's what everybody else does. Yeah, that's what everybody else does. Uh, but we're again, we're not here to talk about Osama bin Laden today. You've been doing some amazing shit um, for the veteran community um, recently, and, and I know you have a foundation that you're extremely proud of. Um, tell us a little bit of, uh, about that today. Well, we <clears throat> I founded um, a foundation called Your Grateful Nation several years ago. Mm-hmm. We recently changed the name to Special Operators Transition Foundation just because it makes more sense. And uh, I started that because I got out of the Navy just over 16 years. And, you know, if you, if you get out of the Navy at 34 years old, you need to keep the lights on, keep the mortgage paid. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Every, everything from I was going to sell sunglasses or I was going to start a security company or, or whatever. But when, when I got out, I realized that uh, I had some traits that I learned as a special operator that a lot of employers would like to have, especially now with some of the results they're getting out of colleges. That they're, 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 you know, whatever, graduate, whatever you want, your, your, your high cost uh, uh, degree. But you're not bringing anything to the deployment community with a, with a, with a degree and something doesn't matter. And, and what our guys are bringing is uh, problem solving. They're bringing, uh, they can lead, they can be led. They know how to, how to do stuff. They know how to effectively communicate with each other. They, the realization that we can get in a room and negotiate a problem, that's kind of what employers want. So, so uh, a Special Operators uh, Transition Foundation does that. And we basically bring them to, you know, where do you want to live? What do you want to do? And then mm-hmm. we put them through a mentorship and um, the employer teaches them their job. And I've, I've yet to have an employer say, not say, this is the best employee I've ever had. Right. And, uh, I, think- and, and I, I started this off as a uh, as an enlisted guy and quickly realized that I probably need some officers to actually run the business part. And that's where, uh, where uh, Tommy Stoner comes in. And uh, Tommy's running the foundation right now. He can probably get a little bit more into it because uh, – you know, I'm sure to look pretty, wear a T-shirt, a flap rim hat. But Tommy, I mean, what do you, you want to talk about? Yeah, you know, I, I'd argue with you. I think I'm the better of the uh, two in the room, but uh, we can wrestle over that one next time I see you. But yeah, so um, kind of almost like the hair club for men. You know, I'm not only the president, I'm the I'm a client. So in, back in 2015, I was getting out and retired in 2016 when it was Your Grateful Nation. So pretty early at that time, I've been around about two years, right, Rob? There. Yeah. yeah. So I was pretty early. I was like I'm the person to go through the program and uh, it was absolutely instrumental in helping me transition and, and land a role in the civilian sector. So when the opportunity came up relatively recently to uh, take over the organization, that it was a pretty easy decision because I get to help give back to not only the veteran community, but also the special operations community. And frankly, as Rob said, to actually help business out because this isn't just about helping the veterans. This is actually furthering American business Mm -hmm. Uh, because veterans in general and particularly in the special operations community, there's so much they could bring to the table that as Rob said, it's kind of missing today in a lot of areas um, that adaptability, ability to lead when you're not in charge, the ability to work with other teams, those skills and attributes Mm -hmm. that folks have picked up, uh, being able to just kind of laugh at a situation and kind of work through it is exactly what businesses need now. And a lot of times they just don't realize it, right? right? And we're seeing, particularly with COVID, that all these skills and attributes that we had, you know, everybody that's been sitting out on a fob, kind of remote, kind of working through problem sets, um, that's that's exactly what businesses mm-hmm. are going through today, trying to trying to deal with the COVID environment. So um, we, are, we pretty early on with Rob and the others identified if we could put these special operators in businesses um, and it doesn't even have to be in the top position so they quickly get there, they, they become very, very influential that they're, they're punching far greater in the mm-hmm. way they get in there. And, and we get a lot of employers that come back to us and say, hey, can, can we have some more? In fact, it just happened today, placed uh, an individual in a few weeks ago and they just came back and said, we got we need another one. So All right. Yep. Uh, two things there uh the first one is uh back to something you said and what rob said about uh it's not necessarily the job on job experience because you're not going to learn how to be how how to make financial deals necessarily as an operator but what you do learn is that we're going to get this done no matter what the fuck happens like this shit's getting done and i think if you start from that premise it opens up all the other opportunities there's no like we're going to go until we get tired and then give up 
you know, which I, you see outside of the military quite frequently. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest benefits to any business out there. The other thing is to what you said about uh, this actually helping people uh, in business, it's absolutely true. So what is the phrase, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? Mm -hmm. Like if it's good, if they're good workers and your business model is legit and it clearly is, then that is good for everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and if you look at a lot of the jobs out there, and, and once I got into the corporate America, I was there for four years before coming to, to this role, it's pretty interesting. You see this job description, it's like two pages of stuff. And then at the bottom, it's like, you know, leader, able to lead teams. And after I got in corporate America, it's like, hey, that those two lines need to be expanded to three quarters of that job requirement. Mm -hmm. And technology piece needs to be kind of down there. So I came from the technology world. You know, I was praying to God that I could get my Zoom working, but I was <laughs> technology in a, in a pretty big regional bank um, because I wasn't doing technology stuff. It's kind of like being on a team. There's other specialists who mm -hmm. have those skills. Really what I brought to is the ability to kind of wade in the complexity, figure out a construct to parse it into a plan and then get the right people executing on it and then track against that execution of work as a team to do it. Right? That's that's what veterans and, and our community brings to it. So it's not deep technology skills. It, it's all the other things out there, those skills and attributes and the right. experience. Have to well, the, the skills of <clears throat> working with a team and realizing why we're here, how to be successful. A prime example is a, um, with some of my guys, some of our guys is um, my wife works in the power line industry. They they hire these guys that literally put put up the power lines. The guys that get on the linemen and the foremen. And uh, Saint Croix got crushed a couple of years ago by one of the hurricanes. And they started with a problem that you know we have all these guys we have nowhere to house them. So their solution was well, we'll bring in a cruise ship. And the cruise ship came in and everyone's living on the cruise ship. But then here's the problem: is there uh, the the people that own the cruise line are capitalists. They're not going to close the bar. It's going to be open all night. Herein lies the problem. <clears throat> so uh, her boss asked me if I knew some guys that could come down and solve it. And it was pretty simple. They're not going to – I think we got two Navy SEALs, two Green Berets that went down there. And they're not going to go whoop everyone's asses even though they could. But they came down there with, with the structure of, yes, you can drink, but stop at this point, eight hours out. Mm -hmm. And uh, just the way they could structure it, kind of like they would a unit, worked brilliantly. And, and it's just that these are problem solving people. And that's what we bring to the um, private sector. Yeah. I mean, the military is uh, and military and paramilitary organization over the years has been copied by business so many times. I don't even know why it's not the first option at this point. I mean, it, it, every single time when there's a major issue, even at the government level, they always collapse back onto that that organizational structure. And to your uh, point a second ago, uh, it seems like uh, to Tom's point. It seems like Trump is getting ready to sign some kind of uh, executive order or legislation. I'm not sure what it is about hiring it uh, for federal jobs that kind of uh, takes less focus off education and puts more focus on actual job skills. Right. So people aren't you don't you don't have to if you're applying for a GS 13, you don't need a master's degree anymore. You need experience and the ability to actually do the fucking job. Right. So it's a little more granular look at what the fuck's going on, because, look, Having a college degree doesn't mean shit. I've got four of them. I've never used any of them for anything. It's nonsense. Yeah, and and you know, from the civilian perspective, um, you know, obviously, I met all of these guys when we were doing Range Fifteen, um, which was you know the first independently crowdfunded uh, movie uh, paid for by veterans, starring veterans, and a lot of the veterans um, were behind the camera as well. Some of them did not have any Hollywood experience. Most of them, um, for example. But God damn it, if they weren't the hardest workers that I've ever worked with and that movie and that more and more importantly, the behind the scenes work environment changed my life to where if you're an employer out there and you're not looking to hire veterans first, you know, looking at somebody like me who was what I, you know, I went to college at Ohio State. <laughs> I was a fucking waiter at the Olive Garden and I was a bouncer. I'm not really providing too many goddamn life skills mm. right after college, but somebody who's been overseas through the thick of it mm. for four years and is coming back or, or whatever their you know service term lasted was right. comes back. Mm. Um, those are the guys I would be more apt to hire first to have of life experience versus. All right, cool, man. Well, I mean, he went to a college and he was you know I heard he was a pretty good waiter at the Olive Garden. His yeah. manager gave a nice rack <laughs> on him, but uh, 
to, to me, it seems like a no brainer. Rob, why is it so difficult to pound it into employers' minds of, hey man, these guys have more life experience than any kid possibly ever could have first out of college. Why is it so fucking difficult for these people? Well, I mean, you gotta figure a lot of these people who are overeducated and for an overpriced education, they're learning from a guy in a room who learned from a guy in the same room who learned from that guy in the same room that have zero experience whatsoever. But you get someone that goes over to a place like Afghanistan and sees what true poverty really mm -hmm. is. I mean, I'm talking about, I've seen, I've seen children so poor that they can't afford clothes and they're playing in a cesspool. I have seen, I have handed a bottle of water to a small girl that reminded me of my daughter. She dumped it out so she could have the plastic to play with. You know, just it's a different world over there. I mean, and people just don't realize how lucky we are to get it. And, and now all we're doing is we're indoctrinating our kids to think how racist everything is and how these statues are bad and the names of the base because of, of being a Confederate. So I tell you, because I mean, you know, Yale owned slaves. I would much rather have someone who graduated from Fort Benning than someone that graduated from Yale. <laughs> right. Because, because you're learning, I mean, you're learning real stuff out there and, and it might be the hard way. And, and uh, but military people, as opposed to a lot of these uh, educated professors, realize that we all make mistakes. We all fuck up, but we better learn from them. Burying your head in the sand doesn't mean it didn't happen. And uh, military, I mean, what, some of my biggest stuff, and I know it was Navy, um, customs and courtesies, traditions. I mm. love learning about it and why we get here. And, you know, we don't, if, if you don't learn from it, you'll repeat it. And we're just seeing that now. And it's just, it's just sad that, uh, you know, and, uh, one thing I love about going through SEAL training is that uh, I think people learn a lot more from getting their ass whooped than getting put in time out. Well, that's, and, that's the thing, right? You can't, there's no way to emulate that in the civilian world. There's no way for any employer to look at somebody that's not a veteran and hasn't been through that crucible, if you want to call it that, and expect the same amount of mental toughness that you would out of somebody that just went to college. It's, it's incomparable, right? It, it, you yes. Can't, it, you can't, you, you absolutely cannot compare it. Yeah. Um, and there's no way to simulate it in the civilian world without getting sued. Right. Yeah. Like they, if you did to somebody, uh, what we did to fucking people in the military, you would be in jail forever. <laughs> like there's no way it would ever happen. So, I mean, yeah, we had a safe space. It was called the surf zone. Yeah. <laughs> Go do flutter kicks in the water, bitch. Uh, yeah, I'll keep you in there until you have hypothermia. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan's been talking about this on the show for a while, and, and I'll pose the question to you. With the pussification of society that's currently happening, and I feel there has never been a higher point of it than right now uh, in today's America, Dan has pitched that it, it should become mandatory for mm. civil service. For civil service. Not necessarily the military, mm -hmm. but some kind of, you serve your government in some way. Yeah, so that, that you learned uh, appreciation for the country and, um, uh, and like things you were talking about, uh, like the kids who are living in poverty overseas, like, you know, appreciate your country a little more before you shit on it every single day. Appreciate it a little bit. Look what's going on in Hong Kong over there. They're, they're, uh, they're being oppressed by the Chinese and all these uh, protesters are waving our American flags yeah. because they love the freedom and everyone's trying to and, and talk to anyone who's come from a socialist country. And they will tell you that you don't want socialism here. But then you talk to these people that were indoctrinated for some damn reason. They're getting funded by guys like George Soros. Mm -hmm. It's a, I mean, it's just a shame. Like the, uh, somehow the the uh, Star Spangled Banner has, be, has become this racist thing. You know, I, I'm also almost to the point where it's like, you know, just stop playing it before the games. Don't give them a platform. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you almost don't deserve it. And they're, 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 they're cutting their own throats by assigning billion dollar contracts, but half a billion dollar contracts, but they're not going to be able to afford it with a uh, lack of fan base. You know, it's yeah. up, down is up, up is down. And, and all they're trying to do is appease their bases. So I want to get your take on everything that's going on in the country right now, uh, in particular in some of these cities like Portland and Seattle, which is formerly known as Chaz at this point. Um, what do you think we can do? And is it the right thing to be sending military into the streets at this point? Because I don't see this shit stopping anytime soon. Um, and with the spread of COVID rapidly continuing, uh, how is it okay for some people to protest out in the streets without masks on and then tell other small businesses to stay home and, uh, and keep your businesses shut? Well, I mean, this is really interesting because how far – how far is it politicized and what's actually behind it? Um, I, you know, I, the, the, I don't like the way the media and the local democratic governments 
spin this as now they're sending in shock troops to yeah. No. Abuse, whatever. It's, C- they, they, it's CBP agents, for Christ's sake, man. They're not fucking yeah, shock it, troops. It's the, fe- it's the federal government because the local government ties the hands of the cops that are actually there, that, and they're all defund the police. So it's, I feel so bad for the cops. And who wants, who would want to be a cop right now with this nonsense in these liberal cities that no are going on? Way. Agreed. Um, I mean, part of me is like, uh, uh, you know, practice what you preach. Part of me is like, let it burn. And mm. when they ask for federal funding, no, you want, you know. You voted for it. You get the government you voted for. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And when I see what's going on in, um, uh, in particular, like P- Portland and Seattle, I don't like. If you want a, a lawless city like that, you want to defund the police and everything else. Great, congratulations. Uh, you live in it. You pay for those fucking taxes and see what happens to the city after that. Um, I don't know why you know we have to get involved at a certain point. Where I'm, I'm with you. Let it fucking burn and then and then see what happens afterwards, because um, what they're doing is they're, they're expecting American taxpayers to pick up the bill for this stupid shit. Oh, yeah. And that's how like, he, that's how it goes. They fucking defund the police and then get their shit pushed in. And it's like, oh, can you help us out? No, bitch. No, it's like I'm standing there telling you that there's a fucking cliff. Yeah. Like, hey, there's a cliff. <laughs> Stop walking, dude. There's a cliff. I fucking slap you. Stop walking. There's a cliff. But I mean, it's, it's got to be, keep it's walking. be it's, it's, it's some point where. You know, and I, I don't look the innocent people that aren't really doing anything. Hey, you still voted for them. So you reap what you sow. Yeah. Change, change your act. When's the last time you had a Republican mayor? It's yeah. been a long goddamn time. So, uh, you know, let them, let them, let them run the hard way. I mean, that's how we grew up. Mm. I mean, I don't know how many times my dad's handed me my ass, including today, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming for sure. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah, coming. Yeah. My mouth like this? Oh, yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's or, uh, coming. I don't know. He's he's pretty excited about those pork chop sandwiches. So he might be all right. He might be all right oh, for okay. today. Do you guys know about the pork chop sandwich you beat my town? No. Oh. No one knows. Tell him about this. Tell, tell you, him. You this guys got to get your ass out here. Come out here. We've got two flavors. We uh, When Rob used to come in from deployment or just come home for a few days, I'd meet him at the airport in Bozeman. We'd drive over and we'd go get what's called a wok chop. Mm. Now, wok chop does not have any bad vibes to it it's just a sound that they make when they're pounding on this pork chop it makes a whopping sound okay that's one variety then we have pork chop johns where we're going to be going right after this adventure right here and <laughs> these things are artery cloggers from hell yes boneless pork chops you can put anything on them you like sometimes i'll just get cheese and mayo what do you you do the whole i get a pork chop loaded deluxe with a ham egg and cheese sandwich in the middle yes Ooh, now you're speaking you heard it here language. first america how old are you tom 71 71 you can eat what the fuck you want guys <laughs> <laughs> don't we believe were, this we bullshit were fil- we were filming a show up here for fox news and i brought my friend peter Ducey up to do it and and we opened a Muslim Stance Freeway early for breakfast time. And this poor little, I mean, you've seen him on TV, brilliant hair, but obviously a very sensitive guy. And <laughs> we fed him a wok shop in the morning. We couldn't get him off the shitter for two hours. We had a, mm. we had a whole, uh, all, all production until <clears throat> he was out of the bathroom. Then yeah. anyway, there, there, you guys, you guys are some meat eaters. You can handle it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I actually only eat meat most of the time. I do carnivore about 90% of the time. So I only eat meat and cheese and shit like that. Yeah. I'm Let's let's set it up. You guys can get come to beat Montana. You would love them. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. When you go to lunch or dinner with Dan, he orders three. So he orders three dinners. Usually because, some form of burger. Yeah. Uh, a fish. Yep. And then uh, maybe it maybe, maybe a chicken. some bacon. Like yeah. On the side or something. On an, yeah. And a side of bacon. The problem is like they it. bring you all this superfluous nonsense. If I order a meat, I want the meat. Like what what sides do you want with that? More meat, motherfucker. I don't want any of your bullshit <laughs> sides. Bring me more meat, and we're going to burn this place down. We'll pretend this is Portland. Yeah, when we we, we had a we had a lunch in L.A. Uh, for interviewing an, a, a potential employee on Tuesday, the, one of those high flute in L.A. places. Dan was sitting right by the Hollywood sign in the background of the roof of this place. Uh, the waitress comes over and she was like, "Great, well, what would you like?" And Dan's like, "I want steak." Oh, well, uh, what, what do you want in that salad? And he goes, "I don't want the goddamn salad." I mean, the woman looked at him as if he said, "I have AIDS." Yeah, I mean, she would. <laughs> she was like, "So, what do you want me to do with it?" And he goes. I don't care. Cook it and bring it over here. What yeah. do you mean? Get rid of the rest of the food. I don't care what you do with it. I think you said give it to the homeless. You go, I'm about the meat, the whole meat, and nothing but the meat. And then you ordered two more sides of meat with it. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, the salmon was really good, by the way. It was re- it was fantastic. The bill was four thousand dollars in L.A., <laughs> which is why that city is going to crumble and burn at any moment. Can you, after all the fucking famous and rich people leave, which they're leaving in droves right now, all that's left are like fucking poor people. Yeah, in a city that can't sustain that. Yeah, none of these cities can sustain this. So uh, I, I want to ask you your your opinion on the upcoming election. Here, we're about ninety eight days out right now. Um, is that, there a world that you see Biden winning this? Uh, yeah, a war, uh, I see Biden winning in a world full of voter fraud, and uh, I'm not I'm not making this up, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Uh, but the, as far as the Democrats go, with saying that requiring an ID to vote is racist, yet you can't you can't uh, send a package through FedEx without an ID. You can't get on a plane without an ID. It's bullshit. Mm-hmm. And, even if you, and even if you ask um, a lot of minorities in places they are, if they have ID, of course we have ID. Why wouldn't I have an ID? Um, it's just, again, it's, it's, it's the white pansy ass liberal that's doing everything they can. Be, that, 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 that's why liberals do a lot of things because they don't give a shit about the country. They care about the party. They care about the democratic party. They'll do anything they can. Um, uh, Mail in voting. I mean, it's I, I I'm a little concerned now if it was a legit vote with um, electoral college, Trump's going to win in a landslide and they're going to take back the house. They're going to get Nancy Pelosi the fuck out where she should be. Um, but it's I mean, it's they're, they're, they are going to lie, cheat and steal the entire time. And they've proven that they don't have any they don't have it. There is no shame. Mm-hmm. They'll do anything. They'll do anything from fake collusion to potentially if everyone's dying from coronavirus yeah. to lives matter to whatever's next to whatever's next now it's like oh the tal oh we're paying the taliban to kill americans why the fuck would we pay the taliban to kill americans when the taliban would just do it for free it's like they're just everything that they can imagine they're trying to come up because they they hate trump so bad but they can't figure out why all they all they know is orange man bad that's it. <laughs> right. Uh, I, see, well, I see Trump playing in a landslide. Long story short, I just had to vent a little bit about all the no, going on. No, that's, I mean, we haven't seen it yet because the debates haven't started, but there's going to be some form of collusion that gets discovered. Like Donna Brazil, for example. Sure. She worked for, what was it, uh, NBC? Yeah, the yeah. NBC Network? Yeah, she was head of the DNC and then ended well, no, up giving she, Hillary the, the well, question. Well, before she yeah. was head of the DNC during the, during the fucking debates, she gave Hillary the questions ahead of time. Correct. Then it got found out that that happened. And then she got a job as a DNC chair. Correct. Yep. That's how it did. The timeline is important there because she did illegal shit and then was rewarded for it. Yeah. Right. Uh, and that's I what mean, happens. Um, and the reason I'm glad you brought up the, the mail in voter fraud here, because it seems like with everything we're reading day after day, the country could potentially be headed toward another shutdown. I know Trump has called off the Jacksonville events um, uh, with the, you know, the in-person rally essentially gone now at this point um this is only going to ramp up the fight from the democrats that we need mail-in voting because of covid um do you think that that will actually happen and if so when would a winner be chosen in mail-in voting i mean what what are you looking three four weeks afterwards i i've i've done mail-in voting plenty of times in california i didn't want to go and stand in lines with those assholes when i lived there um but I, it's the the more increasingly digital something like that becomes, the more easy it is, but also the more uh, susceptible to attack it is. Right? There's no yes. perfect system that cannot be attacked. I know that because the DoD and the fucking uh, uh, and DHS and the VA have all lost my fucking PII, mm-hmm. all of them. Like so, the government's incompetent. You think you're gonna fucking trust them to deal the, do with this shit? I don't know what the fucking solution is, but it's certainly not to trust the government more. That's never the solution. Well, we just call it a protest. Let everybody show up like they always do. They don't need masks. Yeah. yeah. Just vote while you protest. Why yeah. Not? Protest at the ballot box. Um, do you that- notice that you needed an ID to get in a chop? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> You so, needed an so, ID to get so, into so, chat. You still need an ID to get in here, but don't vote. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's uh, look, it's only going to get worse. And uh, again, being under 100 days out now. Buckle up, kids, because it's going to get nasty out there. Well, it's going to get super nasty when Biden has to get on uh, live television with Trump on the other side of that fucking if microphone. He, if he had, and, his, and his camp, Biden's camp, is doing everything they can to make sure he doesn't have to debate Trump. Yeah. Yeah, tell, I, will, I will be in the front row to watch that. Oh, yeah. It's going to be will. It's going to be hilarious. I mean, well, actually, it'll probably be more sad than hilarious because that dude clearly has Well, no, dementia. I almost feel bad for him because he's been propped up to a spot where he's I don't think he's capable of handling and he's not a bad guy. Like he's a good guy. Mm, yeah. But that's 
people they had. And then the, 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 the puppet masters behind him are the ones that are the problem. And then and Biden's going to say whatever they say. It's, it's, but it's, you know, it's almost like, oh, God. And then who's, who's he going to pick for his, uh, his VP? Because that's who you got to be afraid of. Yeah, no, look, you know, uh, I've been reading uh, up on this the last few days trying to figure it out because, I mean, you're down to essentially 10 days. He'll probably pick a VP candidate in the next 10 days. And um, the names that are being tossed out there, uh, one of them is Tammy Duckworth. I don't know if you're familiar with her. I am familiar with her, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know too much about her, and I don't know that the general population does either. Um, she's being talked about. Susan Rice is being talked about. Elizabeth Warren. Uh, Kamala Harris is another one. And uh, and this Val Demings keeps popping up. Um, I I guess she was some. She worked with the police at some point, and uh, they're hoping that could be a nice hail mary for the time that we're going in now. But a- anybody that is on the left that has worked with police at all in any positive way, they're not going to win. The Agreed. same thing with Kamala Harris. She got lit the fuck up because what she did was enforce the law, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can you can debate whether she was a little heavy-handed there with that shit or not, but she was enforcing the policies that were there. Her job as attorney general is not to legislate, right? It's to enforce laws, and she did her job for the most part. A lot of it was fucked up. Uh, like, she did it poorly, but she would, like, from the left perspective, she is the devil. She's everything they hate. I don't think anybody associated in a positive way with police can win on the left. I agree. Um, what about you? Uh, who do you think is his best shot as VP candidate if he's going to try to make a serious run here? Uh, he needs to probably pick a woman of color, if you will. Mm-hmm. And that's why he's leaning so hard towards uh, Kamala Harris, because she is uh, she sounds good. She looks good and, and um, all that. I think Elizabeth Warren's got too much um, too much dirt behind her, mm-hmm. even though it doesn't really matter because the mainstream media will never say anything about it but i mean if, if you're gonna bring you know let's bring in new blood it's like really joe biden and, and elizabeth warren that's super that's what a thousand combined years of politics fine i don't know I, I i if i if i was joe biden i would or his camp because he's not making the decisions i would pick someone that no one knows who it is um uh john mccain tried that with uh sarah palin yeah it didn't yeah. work too well because yeah. turns out I'm not even get into that. Um, <laughs> she re- pick, she reads all the magazines. All yeah. I would, pick, I would pick, yeah. I'd pick someone that doesn't have a lot of history that they know about. They can't find out about right away. Mm. And simply being on the left, the the, the media is not going to be big into digging. So I don't know. I, I but the, the, the decision got to come out quickly though, and then he's got to decide when he's going to debate Donald Trump, which I can't wait for. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. Be if he does, that's the other part of this. A lot of people are asking if he will actually debate. Because this this Biden 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 routine that he's gone through right now, um, where he's just hidden in a basement, has so far worked uh, based on appearances from the media of like, oh, Biden's up by 14, according to CNN. He hasn't said a goddamn word and we haven't been able to find him at all. Um, So is there a shot that you think that he doesn't debate at all? I know your dad leaned over and said something. What, what, What was he saying? Well, well, Biden wouldn't even talk with Chris Wallace last Sunday. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be a pain in the ass to everybody, Trump included. Mm-hmm. But with Biden passing on that one, uh, they're going to tap dance like uh, Sammy Davis Jr. to keep yep. him away from Trump. Yep. Chris Wallace, by the way, is one of the last few journalists left in this country. There's there's not a lot of them that are no. legit journalists anymore. It's pretty well, much. I mean, if, if both sides hate you, then you're probably a pretty good journalist. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a good that's a good sign. Yeah. Uh, he actually made the point that like I kept Trump out in the heat for like two hours and he answered every question I had Biden wouldn't even take the fucking interview that's what Chris Wallace said yeah so it's like shit that's not a good look man I don't know what his I don't know what the plan is I guess right now they're just mitigating until Mm -hmm. they come up with a better plan my my, what I said was that a month ago that he should have picked the fucking VP and had that person out on the stump every single day taking the focus off him but he hasn't done it yeah like what the fuck's going on I think Tammy Duckworth is a great uh candidate for that for that side because she's pretty middle of the road when it comes to left stuff, right? I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have mind seeing Tulsi Gabbard in there. Um, she's too much of a free thinker, man. They would fucking light her ass up. Like she would yeah. be she would be in trouble with the left all the time. And it's just bad, it's bad. Big issue. They're going to keep using it as a talking point though is that she called George Washington a traitor. That's a bad issue. Well, technically he was, motherfucker. I mean, that's <laughs> technically speaking with all well, the, yeah, all okay, the founding fathers enough, were. I guess that, but that's good. <laughs> he also he also rolled across the Delaware at night on Christmas to kill the Hessians, which is pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I would do that too, but I don't like water. 
No, and it, he looked cold by those paintings. It looked really cold there. <laughs> um, the Hessians, by the way, thought that we were far smaller than what we really were, that unit. And that's why we won that fight. Really? Yeah, they, well, did, they you, didn't prepare properly. If you're telling people while they're sleeping, you do look bigger. Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing noble about warfare by the way you either win or you die yeah nobody like, remembers the in between don't you love that look like, there's rules there's rules of this. get the fuck out of here dude i'm killing everybody stay out of the way <laughs> <laughs> rules in war imagine the fucking concept of rules in war that's the dumbest shit i've ever heard of in my life i think we started that probably with that geneva bullshit yeah no thank you i mean it made thank sense you. like let's try not to drop mustard gas on everybody maybe I guess, yeah. but if it's me and you in a room, there's no rules, bitch. No, there's no rules. I'm going to stab you with whatever I've got. You're going to lose your eyes. Yeah. And well, probably your testicles. Probably the testicles first. Yeah, obviously, because I'm going to get hungry, and then I'll yeah. go for the eyes after yeah. that, but uh, i got to eat those testicles first. For the power. Oh, I'm going to have to make some good raw testicles to start a fight. Oh, yeah. I bet up in Butte. Uh, you can cook those up and put them right on a sandwich in you between can, Tom's sandwich. You put them inside the fucking pork Yeah, shop. put a little egg yolk on there. <laughs> let, let all those flavors explode in your mouth. Uh, Rob, did they ask you to speak at the RNC by any chance, man? You're you're a great public speaker. I think I think we were working on it until they canceled it. I I did hear rumors though I was going to speak there, but not not anymore. I did too, and I thought I'd ask and try to get some confirmation out of you, but uh, you know nothing, huh? Uh, th th that whole thing's wiped, right? It's gone. I think, as far as I know, it's wiped out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I want to ask you uh, about something because I follow your Twitter. Um, I follow your uh, your social media. Your Twitter is amazing, by the way. And I always I always feel like because of who you are and what you did that you get the inside info on things way before everybody else does. Um, I've said this for months and months and months on the show now that I think Kim Jong Un died four months ago, five months ago. I, I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that is that true? Because you you had written something on your Twitter. Well, yeah, I was I was talking to some sources and they said it to me, but I can't confirm uh, for obvious reasons. You know, it's, it's very hard to get sources in North Korea. And but he does have body doubles, and I think his sister's been running it for a while. But <laughs> that's not something they're going to announce right away. And I think that they uh, they got one of the stand-ins in there, and he's the one that's saying he can't be friends with Trump anymore for obvious reasons. If Trump sees him face to face, Bill, no, it's not the same dude. Right. Um, yeah. I think he died. I, so I'm with you on this. I'm in this camp, and I've said it for a long time, and everybody's like, there's no confirmation he's dead. And it was like, dude, with a guy like that, with a personality like his, usually he's out talking shit, blowing shit up all the time. We haven't heard anything from that guy you know, in four months. And, then we, and we, we hear from his sister now, and they're, uh, I've even heard some of the dumbest shit that um, the left was saying that North Korea is so much more advanced socially than we are because they have a woman of color in power. <laughs> I'm not making that up. I'm not, I wish I was lying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it feels like the end of the world, doesn't it? I mean, mm. my God. I hope so because so, this shit has taken forever. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm voting for Thanos in 2020. <laughs> Ladies and Just gentlemen. Just to eliminate it. What do you guys – do you guys get together on election night? Are you guys going to watch it together? What, what are you going to – Yeah, I might still be here. I don't know. I, I'm, uh, I'm on an uh, uh, endless summer right now. I don't mm. know. I don't know. Well, we're doing a big election party in Austin if you want to come down and get fucked up with us. I do that. You'd be surprised. Tommy, are you going to come with us? Yeah, I'm jump on the plane. Hey, we'll be there November 3rd. We're Look, we moved the entire operation to Austin, Texas. Um, Joe Rogan copied us because our podcast is bigger. Whatever. No big deal. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> there's a, ah, we got more downloads. I'm, I'm pretty sure, right, no. Dan? No, no. no. We're, we're shadow banned on YouTube for having guests like Rob on. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I will. My Twitter will get you banned from a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Dude, we've, so we, what do I say? The, the truth will get you fired. Yeah, every single time. They Look, YouTube, every, every form of media hates the right, but uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, our YouTube, we have 9.3 million listeners. We have 52,000 subscribers on YouTube. Makes zero sense whatsoever. Uh, but we're doing a huge election night party down in Austin, Texas, so we'll be watching it live. And uh, I'm, I'm curious as to everything that uh, is going to happen with this. Are you a big sports guy, Rob? Well, you know, I was. I was um, a monster Washington Redskins fan for my entire life. And I'm talking about, like, you would buy me shit when I was four. Four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was I was all Redskins. They're a family to me. They've done – and they, that organization was so good to me. They, they would send me birthday wishes of videos of coaches um, in the draft room. My birthday is April 10th. It's right when they're drafting. And then uh, they caved. They bent the knee. They changed their name to the Washington football team. And I got chucks. I can't watch them anymore. Um, they're too political. I 
switch to the Chicago Bears because I'm assuming a bear is not racist or whatever. And, um, <laughs> yeah, but it could yes. be homo- it could be homophobic though. Yeah, yeah. Because... yeah never know. And uh, no, so um, and I, you know when people would ask me what are my hobbies now that I'm out of the Navy, it was going to sporting events. Mm-hmm. So going to Dolphins games. I love the Miami Dolphins. They're so good to me. I go into a lot of Bears games, Redskins games, Red Sox games. Uh, going to anywhere I can and and just the political politicalization and some of these whiny fucking players it's yeah. just i'm kind of i'll be honest i'm kind of over them all yeah I, I felt the same way as i was looking across the landscape because you know sports started to come back over the weekend obviously with what happened with the, the florida marlins um i have a feeling baseball is coming to an end yeah very very quickly um yep. 14 players tested positive this morning and they canceled their home opener, and then also the game in Philly where they just left. Correct. Got canceled so I, I'm not sure if baseball is going to stick around, but I know for the NBA, I was watching some of the scrimmages over the weekend. They've got you know Black Lives Matter on the court, so it is it. in huge letters. Um, you know, before the San Francisco Giants game, they were all kneeling before the anthem. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm with you. Stop televising the anthem uh, because you're going to lose. You know. The, the casual viewer and all that stuff because I, I keep hearing what you're saying over and over again of like you lost me sports is entertainment I don't understand the the politicization of it all of it um, with sports at all but uh, you know when I watch it I'm watching it to be entertained I don't want to think about politics whatsoever now you're right every last camera angle you were jammed in with something political in your face and it's no longer become entertainment to me it's become politics and what you believe in and it's like Man, you're getting paid, you know, like you said, half a billion dollars to go out and play a sport for entertainment. I don't give a shit what your politics are. No, and, that, and that's where we would go when we'd have the political fights over dinner, fine, but then turn on the Red Sox game and we're over it for three or four hours. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's supposed to be. Now, and now they just can't, they can't shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I don't, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, and I'm fine now, you know, I, I'm more than fine just not having the TV on. Yeah, yeah. I I, f- I feel like rich athletes talking about oppression is a lot like uh, white teenagers in Portland talking about oppression. But you've never been <laughs> oppressed in your fucking life. You kidding me? Like it's just it's FOMO. It's fear of missing out on the oppression thing. You're rich as fuck, LeBron James. And if you if why you don't live you... in a mansion because you play with a ball, you're yeah. in pretty good. Yeah, I feel mm-hmm. like use your money, start some businesses and hire people of color and make sure they're getting educated and work experience and careers. That's how you fucking do it. Not by p- painting some bullshit on the ground. Yeah. Motherfucker. Jesus Christ, man. This is ridiculous. It's like we're living in some kind of fucking bizarro world where everybody's in on the joke, but like a couple of people were, and everybody else is like, uh, what's the fuck is happening? That's right the way now? I feel. I look around and I'm like, is this is this really happening? Um, since you guys are up in Montana, uh, you were talking about fly fishing. Is it like Yellowstone? You guys watch that show Yellowstone with Kevin Costner? Yellowstone's great. I love that movie. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Is it no, like it that? Like, it looks like that too. They, they film it they up film here. It here. Yeah, and that, that's what the mountains look like. That's what uh, that's what a lot of places look like. The rivers are great. The outdoors are great. The water's amazing. It's and just just the sound of the running water when you're out there by yourself. You want to get the fuck away from everything. That's mm. That's what you do. Get on a get on a boat and have someone smarter than us roll us, roll us down the river. Yeah, fly fishing is it's it's almost a religion to me. Mm. It's and and the best fly fishing guide I know is my grandson. And I'm going to try to get this yahoo next to me on a boat maybe in the next couple of days. And all we do for eight hours is listen to nothing. Yeah. Uh, well, I feel like, like the absolute dream right I now. I feel like if you're with Rob and your idea is to listen to nothing, what you're really going to be listening to is Rob. Because <laughs> he doesn't like water and he's a seal. Yeah. Are you any good? Is he any good at fly fishing? I suck. He's good. I'm, I'm okay. Um, my grandson is a, a guide. He's excellent. Mm. But you can catch on to this fly fishing stuff very quickly. The learning yeah. curve pretty fast. And you- it's, there's a little bit of technique. There's technique to every part of it. To what fly do you use? How do you cast? What, mm. You know, how do you keep the fly from hitting your partner's ear? Kind of shit. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's uh, it really is. Once you start to begin the curve, you really. Mm. But if I, I'm not fun to be with because if I don't hear myself talking up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I get I get bored. You, whenever you hear me go, so there I was. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, when all this dumb shit is over, you got to take him down to Idaho to Evan's place. You know, Idaho River Adventures. They do. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't That'd know if awesome. you've ever been on it before, but they have guides. Oh, we got a special guest behind Rob there. Is that your uh, mom? Who is that? 
Sister? Who is this? Sister. She runs the whole She's operation. in charge. Hello, sister. Hi, sister. She's got a Shroot Farm shirt on. Um, ah, I love it. <laughs> From the office. And that's, uh, that's half seven of half vodka because she knows how we roll. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Goddamn Good right that. she does. Um, let me ask you, is, is Montana like the show? Is there liberals moving there trying to open up? Oh, like, yeah, ski yeah. yeah, the transplants. They'll... Uh, They'll leave Northern California because the taxes got too high, and they'll move here and bring their liberal policies up here, and the taxes get higher. No shit. Oh, yeah, it's real. It's legit. God damn it. I feel like it's happening to every cool city and state there is right now. Look at Nashville. They started moving in there. They elected a liberal mayor, and then the property taxes went up to 37%. Yep. And Charlie Sheen got AIDS, too. I don't know if that was because of the liberals, but probably had something to do with it. Probably a little something to do with it. Ones, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I, mean, I don't like their policies, but I'd really rather party with liberals than conservatives. That's true. Yeah, I would rather party with Charlie Sheen than fucking anybody on the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. He's a good dude, man. He's one of my buddies. He's that video you, him, and uh, Tam and JT made is funny as shit. I show that to people. Oh, all the that time. was just funny standing there in the, in the middle of the thing, and we're like, "Hey, we got to do it because we're gonna fuck with JT because the Air Force, all this stuff, yeah, Army, yeah. Navy, yep. and then we." Grab Sheen and because he's obviously Hawkins from Navy yep. Seals and there's yeah really funny uh, uh, interaction if you will. I was even showing some buddies on my net and they said, um, "Man, that dude does a really great Charlie Sheen impersonation." Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> Come on, now. Come on, now. yeah, because you're you're down in Nashville. I always see you hanging out with like Kid Rock and Tim Montana, and uh, you got a nice little crew down there. Um, yeah, those are my those are my boys. Kid Rock's one of my buddies. We golf once in a while. He's getting really good at golf too. I gotta I gotta get my game on. But he well, he cheated. He he, he bought one of those uh, um, simulators at home, so he can go just go golf all, all the time. I gotta I gotta get out there and keep it real with the sunscreen. Yeah, I, dude, a, a man like yourself, you can't be out there for for four and a half hours on the look links. Look at me, I'm a person of flames. Mm, same. <laughs> Who's the best golfer at all? You guys, is it is it Kid Rock? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's got the longest drive. I mean, if you if you consider all of us who've golfed together, it's uh, it's uh, Ricky Fowler. Um, yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he's good. And then I'm, John Daly's pretty good still. Oh, he's going to be. Oh. So we're going to come to that thing in September. Yeah. Oh, cool. Da- yeah, good. Daly's, Daly's going to be there, right? Because I've always wanted to drink booze yeah. with John Daly. Yeah, he's, yeah he's, he's been sober for three decades. Oh yeah, you so bet. am I. So, so am I. Dan, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that I can be <laughs> a luck, Dan. <laughs> yeah, you guys definitely need to come out. It's going to be a great event. Yeah. yeah, come out, Tommy. Tell us about that. Event, yeah, t- Tommy, tell us yeah. about that event. It's um, so it's going to be on no matter what, right? COVID, non-COVID, we're we're rocking. Yeah, we're we're planning on moving forward. I mean, we're golfing, so I, I believe that's COVID friendly, right? Nobody yeah. COVID was going on. Not so. the way I play. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, golfing's not for for real fun, right? So, uh, or for real golfing, it's go out there and have some fun, knock the ball around. So that's what yes. it's about. But yeah. So on September fifteenth and sixteenth, we're uh, doing a fundraiser and program events for the organization. So the first day is the big golf golf event. So as as you guys just said, mm-hmm. Dave coming out. Um, we got some other celebrities that are coming out that are confirming. But we're just going to get out there, have a good day, knock the ball around. Uh, you know. This group's got got some operators. Will be with the teams there. Got the celebrities out there. Obviously, Rob included in that lineup. Uh, next day, we do a motorcycle ride fundraiser event. So, Indian sponsoring us on that one. The, the local Indian shop here. So, we're going to ride out to a uh, distillery that a Green Beret here has opened up, and then uh, we're looking to do the American Music uh, Country Music Awards watch party that night at Kid Rock's Bar. So, got two days of a lot of great events out there, and. All the proceeds are going to go to the organization and everything that's donated goes to support these operators that go through the program. We Well, look, uh, Dan and I will definitely be there. Um, tell the people at home where they can help donate um, or, or find your organization online. Yeah, absolutely. So go to uh, www.sotf.org and uh, that'll tell you about our organization there. It'll give you a rundown of exactly what we do and the companies have been supporting us. And then... Uh, You'll see a little donate uh, button up there if you want to just donate directly, and it'll take you to a donation page. And then you also see an events page, and that'll tell you about the events that we're doing in the local area. So Nashville is included on there. Got an event up in Jacksonville. Uh, next week we'll be out in Denver for a smaller event, going to New York. Uh, a lot of a lot of great stuff out there, and obviously 
trying to work around the COVID piece. But the thing about all of the events that we do, they're just not fundraisers. We actually bring the operators to these events and we're actually trying to network them and, and get them connect with people because that's a power of organization, right? So there's a lot you can do as part of the transition and that assistance. But as Rob talked about, the real power of this organization, we built these very robust networks of folks that mentor the operators as they're going through this transition period and then hiring partners out there. So we bring operators to these events and we use them, these events to actually get people connected because it all starts with that conversation. And of course, we raise the money on the back end of that and we put it back into the next guys coming through. You know, our programs like a rope bridge for, for all those folks have been out there and done a rope bridge across the river all the transition you're just kind of going across right the first guy to go across take off all your equipment tie a rope around your waist swim across the river that's the way it's supposed to work right ties to the tree next guy slide across the river the sad thing about transition for a lot of veterans it's like everybody's a number one man swimmer guy gets across transitions he's like now i'm a civilian kind of goes off on their merry way you know our organization is trying to build this rope bridge uh to make sure that everybody has a really streamlined a positive trans uh, transition and as rob said not get a job. No, nobody wants a job, right? Job is kind of scrubbing the toilet with a toothbrush, you know, back, back when I was a private and stuff, that was a job. People want a career and something they can be passionate about. And that's what we're trying to do. So making those connections and uh, to, to help with that. So if you're out there and uh, you want to support the organization and, and you, you have a network to help folks get connected, you know, come out to these events and uh, meet these operators, open up your networks uh, to folks. And then, uh, you know, at the least you donate some money and, and that'll help pay for the operators. Um, these are very individualistic uh, processes we put people through. So because of that, they're they're fairly expensive in the scheme of things. So everybody gets their own tailored transition process and connections and mentorship. So we put all that money to making sure the, that, that they get the most rewarding and professional experience they can transitioning because they all deserve it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And like I said, uh, Dan and I will definitely be there for the events. Uh, Rob, who's your dream foursome in golf? Um, no, are we going to be partying or are we going to be uh, competing? Uh, I'd say partying. Yeah, What's your handicap? Are you that good to compete? No, it's no, only. No, 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 I'm not good to compete. I got to figure out my foursome. So it's definitely going to be uh, uh, Kid Rock, for sure. My father, who's got a mean drive. And then Tommy Help and my father in law. I think we can beat anybody. Really? So that's that's okay. that's your dream one. Now, let's, let me back up. So Jim Jeffries, Charlie Sheen, obviously me, and I'll go with Kid Rock again. So that's my. <laughs> <laughs> that's the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, well, it depends on what we're doing and what time we started. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm I'm terrible at golf and great at drinking. So um, yeah, yeah, my... yeah, yeah, yeah. Real good well, at that. It's going to be perfect for you. I mean, that's what I am. I got the clubs, got a nice set of clubs, but, uh, you know, I'm out there for the drinking and hanging out. Well, see, the, my, my thing is I, I don't have great clubs, but I've got amazing balls. <laughs> there yeah. it is. There it is. I was waiting for it. There it is, kids. I was waiting for it. Uh, now's the point in the show we we uh, we give the drinking bro of the week. Uh, I'd say what? Since we got three people on the show, let's give away three. Um, we'll start with you, Tommy. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? That's somebody who's inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who is the inspiration for you starting this organization? Oh, wow. You, you know, I got to tell you that um, it was really kind of uh, Rob, honestly. So he's one. There's two. So I'll give it to Rob. And again, this goes back and, and I'm being very genuine here. So I started out this way. Starting out my transition process. So, so I had no idea what to do, right? So I came in the Army. I was 17 years old. I was kind of that knucklehead walking down the street, <laughs> like picture on the wall of a small town, Kansas, some guys jumping out of an airplane, right? So I was like the easiest guy they ever recruited. I walked in. They're like, how can we help you? I'm like, where do I sign, right? So, you know, a guy got his quota on that day. Um, so I spent all that time in, and when I got out, I really had a clue. So this organization really – Help point me in, in in a great direction. It's helped a lot of other people. And then the other one was my dad. You know, it, it kind of goes to my dad. Uh, he was not about quitting. So you know, kind of talking about whiny society these days. You know, my dad has zero tolerance for that and always has. You just kind of roll up your sleeves. You know, pick your head up and move on. So he was a guy. You know, when I was in different selections, whether there's a Ranger Regiment or SF, it's you know, end of the night. I'm just like, yeah, I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not stopping because my dad will chew my ass and stuff. So. Definitely, you know, 
cheers to them. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. What about you, Rob? My drinking bro of the week is sitting right next to me. My father, Tom O'Neill, because he taught me how to eat with a spoon and how to shoot a free throw. And uh, <laughs> what that brings me back to is the basics. And um, if you can master the basics, you can master anything. And if I could describe anything I did from shooting to jumping to diving, it came back to free throws and eating with a spoon. Father, my drinking bro of the week. Yeah. Is that gonna is. is that gonna be your fucking uh, your Jocko thing? Make your bed in the morning, but instead you you eat with a spoon and shoot free throws every morning. That was actually uh, McCraven who. Oh, it was make McCraven. Your- That's right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, I think that speech, possibly the best public speech ever given. Mm-hmm. I'm so jealous. I didn't write that. Well, <laughs> you talked about your balls, so it's better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show them. Yeah. Hey, Ray, 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 Cash Ray Care. Yeah, Ray Care's pulled his dick out like three times on the show. I know. That's Ray Care's thing. Is he? He yeah. He was. You know his story. He was. It was a rumor. You know his story. At Buds. Yeah, I know about that. That's true. That was him. God damn it, dude. So you can confirm that because what? Is, for those of you who don't know and didn't listen to that episode, he said he can he can make himself come without touching himself. Yeah, he could he could make himself come without touching himself, and he proved it in front of his entire class. He <laughs> and um, a headband and didn't touch himself bare naked in front of an entire class of Navy SEAL students, and he did it. Wow, I can't believe that's fucking true. I thought he was bullshitting this whole time. Well, well, you know what he does too when he so works. Rob, I, I just got to tell you, my, you know, I have my, I got strong opinions of Navy SEALs, and you just kind of took it to a whole nother level. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, Navy SEALs might be. <laughs> you were gonna talk about Ray in the gym. He likes to strip down completely naked and sprint around the gym from time to time. Is that what you were gonna say? He's a he's a lunatic, but he, he we definitely want him on our team. Yeah, well, I, yeah. Def- I don't want him on the other team. Well, he's a freak. Like his abs have abs. Yes, it's true. That's true. <laughs> he's he's a blast, man. So are you. Uh, we greatly appreciate you stopping by the Wait, show. Wait, Tom today. gets a drinking bro of the week too. Tom, you also get a drinking bro of the week. Uh, who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? This is a tough one because uh, it's going to sound a little odd because we are sitting in the home that I grew up in. Oh when shit! I'm six years old on up until college, and one of one of the, one of my influences was my father just like Rob complimented me. So I'm going to split it with my dad and my son, Rob. It's it, there's more to the story because the place is this place is possessed and he leaves quarters for me and for Rob too. Is that real? And I'm like, Hey, you cheap fuck. Why aren't you leaving hundreds? Yeah. <laughs> well, inflation 25 cents is a lot of money back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he is. He does have this place. Kind of, it's it's still his house. It's fun to it's, talk. It's it, fun to talk about when the sun's out. Not so fucking fun at three three fifteen. So, so is that true? Like, you wake <laughs> up in the morning and find quarters. Are they quarters from yeah. today or quarters from when he grew up? Well, they're quarters currently. I mean, I'll I'll go downstairs to do some laundry, and here's two quarters on the washing machine. And then I go to Rob's house in Nashville. And here's quarters on the on the damn yeah yeah on the on the on the counter. He's got a great sense of humor. It's funny when you're invisible. <laughs> well, 20 years ago that may have been this explainable, but nobody even has changed anymore, right? No, but what what's the significance of quarters in, to him and your family? I have no idea what the significance. No, we know it's him. It took us a few years. We figured. Yeah, it out. it's it's him. It's him. So I, I, that that probably kind of. Was it wasn't quite what you guys were looking for in terms of uh, my drinking bro, but it, it'll go to Rob. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. Look, I, I, whoever doesn't give it to their father on this show, you know they had shitty parents. Um, because I, I think it's always the first one you should give it to. Of like, oh yeah, yeah, of course. And if it's dad. a if it's a woman that doesn't give it to her dad, then you know she probably was a stripper at some point. Or yes, she was on a pole. Yeah. Yeah, and that, there's nothing wrong with that because no. we need them too in the workforce. Yeah. Maybe that's your next charity that I can I can be a part of. Uh, Fathers Without Boundaries, just just helping young 22-year-old strippers find their place in this world, yep. you know? Brilliant, I'm in. Perfect. Yeah, we're going to have a uh, golf tournament uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, there will be no holes because uh, they'll be everywhere. Nailed it. Boom. You're welcome. I think that's a perfect way to end the show, D'Anthony. Uh, Rob O'Neill, Tom, Tommy, appreciate you guys stopping by and being on the show, man. You're one of our favorites, and uh, and we'll see you in a couple months at uh, at the charity events. Uh, awesome. from- 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, for Mr. Rob O'Neill, D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>